This video is a response to ContraPoints. Now available in soft Corinthian leather. Last week a transgender teenager named Milo Stewart uploaded a YouTube video titled All Cis People Are Transphobic, and you're probably racist too. I didn't know Milo was a teenager. So, what do you think happened next? How did the YouTube anti-SJW community respond? Well, since it's a community that prides itself on its cool-headed rationality and willingness to stand up for free speech, you might have expected a compassionate and measured retort. But you didn't expect that, did you? And neither did I. Uh, ah, fuck. Those were indeed very juvenile responses. Milo's video inspired several mean-spirited video responses. This doesn't excuse the mean-spiritedness that people had in their responses, but can you understand why people were angry in the first place? But the one I want to focus on is the Amazing Atheists. Before I dig in, I should say that TJ is by no means the worst anti-SJW vlogger out there. He has a kind of self-awareness about himself. But hey, don't feel bad. I barely have a penis either. And about his audience. These brainless fucking insects that I respect. So you like the fact that he makes fun of himself, but you don't actually like anything he has to say. And that's really lacking in certain other vloggers I could mention. In his video response to Milo, TJ even seems to realize that he's too smart to be saying the things he's saying. He almost seems trapped, like he's a hostage who has to cater to these dum-dums in the comments. Well, that seems to be what you'd like to think. And yet there he is. A grown man publicly mocking a transgender 17-year-old on the internet. Well, after watching the very beginning of this video, that's when I found out that Milo is a teenager. And then I did some more research and found out that Milo is 17. I have a feeling that the Amazing Atheist didn't know that Milo is 17 either. Hey guys, I may appear female, but I am in fact a non-binary trans person who prefers male pronouns. I am oppressed! Yeah, that was pretty mean-spirited and that was unnecessary. Welcome to the YouTube community, Milo. You're going to make a lot of friends here. There's obviously a difference between criticizing and bullying, but on YouTube, bullying often tries to pass itself off as critique. Agreed. There are a lot of claims in Milo's video that are debatable. For instance, Even if you are raised by open-minded people, you will still be psychologically affected by living in a society built on imperialism, which, by the way, created cisnormativity and heteronormativity. I don't know what that means. And you never bothered to find out for the purpose of this video either. But if you really wanted to engage with Milo, you might leave a comment like, That seems like an extreme claim, Milo. Why do you say that all cis people are transphobic? Milo made it very clear later in his video that he's not interested in debating the meanings of words. But if you look at the top comments on his video, they're not like that at all. Everyone is dehumanizing him and encouraging him to kill himself. These were not shown in the comments you are screenshotting, but uh, yes, uh, people did indeed tell Milo in comments to kill himself. It's fucked up. You might say that everyone gets nasty comments, and that's true, but on Milo's video, the nastiest, most personal, most, well, transphobic comments are also the highest rated, which suggests that they're representative of the general audience. YouTube can most certainly be a very toxic place. Notice that these people are supposedly so angry about the accusation of being transphobic that they respond by being transphobic. It's pretty pathetic, isn't it? It reminds me of the people who say that there is no rape culture that blames women for being raped, and, by the way, women are to blame for being raped. That definitely happens in comments, and when people have full reign, with full anonymity, this is the kind of shit you're gonna see. There are some people who just get off on being as mean as they possibly can, and being mean on this platform is popular. So you say that trans people and feminists need safe spaces because they're crybabies who can't handle criticism. But when you look at how terribly they're actually treated in f free speech zones, the safe space thing starts to make sense. You're going to compare text comments on a toxic platform to real life? Uh, no. And besides, you all have your own version of safe spaces anyway. In this case, the complete circle jerk that is the comments section of anti-SJW videos. I mean, just look at the difference between the ratings of SJW and anti-SJW videos. Well, 
a lot of the stuff that they're teaching in sociology classes, the stuff that is basically what Milo is repeating, is basically a religion with dogma and all that shit. Yeah, uh, on YouTube, it's a place where religion goes to die. And if people are going to push out some sort of new religion that demonizes huge swaths of the population, it's pretty obvious that it's going to have a lot more thumbs up when people critique it than those that push it out. Which group of people is in a fucking safe space? People on Facebook or Google Plus who lock down their profiles so only their friends can respond to them. Now I should say that there are some masochists like me who actively enjoy pain and humiliation. Mommy. But I'm guessing that most of you don't enjoy being publicly abused and insulted by thousands of people. You predict that Milo will shut down his comments section, and if he does, you'll say it's because he can't take criticism and he hates freedom of speech. I always think that's a ridiculous argument because it doesn't have anything to do with freedom of speech or a lack of freedom of speech. It may have to do with censorship, it may have to do with someone getting hurt, but it certainly isn't a lack of freedom of speech. I think it's ridiculous when people make that kind of argument about it. But how many of you anonymous cowards could sit through this kind of onslaught? How many of you could have sat through it when you were fucking 17? Well again, I don't think most people know that, or knew, that Milo is 17. That's neither here nor there. To me, what would help this whole thing would be if Google made it so nobody can leave comments at all unless they prove who they are to Google. They don't have to give their real name to the public, but they'd have to do something like what you find in Second Life if you want access to the adult areas. You have to prove you're an adult, and you have to prove you are who you are. On Second Life, you have to give them your driver's license number. Things like that. There are other methods as well. And uh, if you want to comment, then that's what you have to do. I think that would solve a lot of this. There'd still be people that get through, but at least people would be held a little bit more accountable. This way, if they say something that's actually an actual threat, um, they can be held accountable by the law. Because threats, whether online or offline, should be off limits. It's especially hard for me to watch this kind of shit go down on YouTube, because I've been led to believe that the people leaving and upvoting these comments are, in fact, nerds. And I thought nerds were bullied and abused by assholes and jocks in high school. So you'd think they'd be a little kinder to other unfairly reviled people as a result. But they really aren't. These nerds seem incapable of genuinely asking themselves whether they're standing up to bullies or whether they've become the bullies themselves. As I've said in other videos, thanks to Robert Wallace bringing this up to me, is we never really become adults in the way that we think. We're all still children. The only thing that changes our actions in that regard are the scenarios we put ourselves in, the environment we're in. But if we're put in a type of environment that's similar to being on a playground in elementary school, we're still going to act like children on a playground in elementary school. Now, I realize that Milo isn't communicating his ideas perfectly. He's using the kind of SJW talking points that go over well in activist circles, but don't work when your audience is deeply hostile to you from the beginning. Assuming Milo doesn't retreat from the shit wave that just hit his channel, he'll eventually learn that you shouldn't say things like, I don't care about your cisgender feelings, unless you're prepared for the locusts to descend upon you like the fucking plague of Egypt. Well, I'm glad you acknowledge that. Back to TJ's video. It's not just the brainless fucking insects in his audience that are obtuse bullies. TJ himself mostly misrepresents Milo's arguments so that he can spend more time on mockery. The general trend now for anti-SJW channels is to berate and pwn some hapless feminist rather than to really argue. That's kind of similar to people criticizing evolution without understanding it. One's ignorance of a concept is not an argument against it. But the things that Milo is saying here is pure tripe. It's tripe. Even the anti-SJW titan T.L. Deer has complained about this recently, probably because he realizes it's becoming an embarrassment for the entire community he's part of. I'll totally give you that. It's become quite embarrassing. The sad thing about this case is that Milo actually had a point. There's some truth to the idea that everyone is racist, so long as you distinguish between explicit racial hostility and implicit prejudice and bias. For me, it's the issue of the fact that he's using these new sociological definitions that are 
not the colloquial, not the dictionary, and not the historical definitions of words. This is a distinction that Milo himself makes. Words like racist, misogynistic, and transphobic are not insults. The only way they can't be insults is when someone is using these new sociological definitions where racism is privilege or prejudice plus power. Sexism is privilege or prejudice plus power, that sort of thing. Nor are they stereotypes or generalizations. Rather, they are facts about the way we are socialized in a Western society. If Milo had said, all people are racist, all people are sexist, all people are misogynistic, all people are misandric, all people are cisphobic, all people are transphobic, then there might have been a point. But Milo was saying all white people are racist, all men are misogynistic, etc. Okay, that doesn't fly. Neither you nor anyone else is going to sell people these, these new concepts for what these words mean. Okay, you want to use them in your little SJW groups, fine. But when you're trying to bring those to the real world, no, the answer is fuck you. Now, I do agree with the anti-SJW is that leftists should abandon this stupid habit of saying Western society like it's so much more evil than the progressive utopias of Russia, Uganda, and Saudi Arabia. But the kid is 17 years old and trying out some new ideas. These aren't new ideas. This is what's being taught in sociology classes. Give him a fucking break. I mean, he even clarifies his view when he says, I talk mostly about Western societies because that is what I have the most experience with. Yeah, this has happened to me a number of times. There have been many times I'll talk about how creeping Sharia has no chance of making it here in the United States. I can't speak for other countries. Well, you know, in these other countries, it's it's it could be a possibility. And it's happening. It's happening. Well, okay, I, I you know, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. All I can speak for is the United States. Well, you know, you shouldn't speak about the subject at all. Or you shouldn't be so United States-centric. And I'm like, what the hell, you know? And this is from people that are often harping about my freedom of speech, my freedom of speech. But TJ just responds with a racist caricature. Behead the infidel! But first, let us rape her to remind her that she is female. Ah, so there you are saying that prejudice against a belief system is racism. A belief is not a race. But you want to cling to these new sociological, non-colloquial, non-historical, non-dictionary definitions of words. She is a witch! She eats a poo-poo! Those images are in context for the belief systems that are being described. Wait, why do people like this guy? Well, the same reason they like this guy. But TJ should know better. So you're going to compare someone who is criticizing a belief system that treats women like shit to someone who treats women like shit? In the end, TJ has little more to offer than a misrepresentation of Milo's argument. Oh, you might think to yourself, I'm not racist! I treat all people as if they deserve the same rights and same human dignity! Yeah, we've heard that lie before, racist! As far as we're concerned, you might as well be the Klansman burning the cross and lynching the black people. In a later video, maybe I'll take up the question of whether everyone has racist prejudices, but I probably won't use TJ as an antagonist in that video. He just doesn't have anything serious to say about the subject. Well, as long as you're using the new sociology definition, and not the historical dictionary or colloquial definitions of the word racism, then, you know, um, you don't have much to say on this either. He could have mounted an argument against Milo's claims without attacking his gender identity and getting these brainless fucking insects in my audience it's all worked up in a hate frenzy. But instead, he's decided to appeal to the sort of person for whom a fat kid falling in the mud and breaking his glasses is the height of comedy. And how's that working out for him? Just fucking fine. And I get that part of the fun of YouTube is watching personalities clash. I'm not saying that vlogs should be perfectly calm and rational. Kind of a funny thing is that they're both wearing almost the same glasses. 
It's one thing when a belligerent asshole like me attacks another belligerent asshole like TJ, but when a belligerent asshole with hundreds of thousands of subscribers attacks an earnest teenager half his age and with a fraction of his audience, thereby inundating the small channel with a swarm of brainless fucking insects who are there not to engage or contribute, but to bully and torment, well, it's just kind of- Yeah, it is pretty shitty. And as I said, Google could do something about this, but they're not going to because all this meanness makes Google money as well as the YouTubers who are making a lot of money off of being mean. So, 